production rate is controlled by the molding cycle that's the time to melt inject and cool the polymer into its final shape in the case of the hood it's about 70 seconds a molding can be ejected much earlier with the assistance of a robot because the, the product can be too hot for a human being to handle and might be uncomfortable over a long period of time whereas a robot can handle that uh, much earlier and therefore reduce the overall cycle times and the one thing a robot or a pick and place unit provides is a consistency of time cycle uh, a man a human operator uh, will tend to get tired during the course of his working day or shift and his output and his performance will be variable according to uh, over that period of time a robot provides that consistency it, it makes the process more reliable it's also more productive in that we get a higher output from a robot assisted molding machine the decreased cycle time gave a six percent improvement in efficiency but are there any other ways in which the efficiency can be increased? It is not sufficient merely to place a robot by a molding machine. Uh, you've got to minimize the number of operations that have to be done once the molding has been taken out of the press to relieve the operator of the, the, the routine tedious tasks. And the one area that we w developed quite actively was to uh, look at certain aspects of tool design like spruless molding, the use of hot runners, and so on to minimize the amount of after molding work that's necessary. The original flymo operation was taken over by Electrolux in 1976 and up till that time most of the plastic parts made by both companies were bought in from trade molders. After the takeover the Electrolux parent company decided to manufacture their own moldings used in vacuum cleaners, refrigerators and freezers. The in-house moulding now provides about 75% of the total requirement. Clearly the capital investment was very large. So what were the main advantages? The main advantages included such things as the cost of transport. Uh, by having things made in-house, the transport costs were minimised. This is especially uh, of note when you have a large number of volume-intensive products to manufacture. The second uh, important advantage was that you have a lot more flexibility to plan your operation. Changes of plan can be communicated and implemented much more easily. The third important advantage um, was in fact we can introduce new manufacturing processes very quickly uh, if everything is done on site. In-house injection mouldings like the hoods are the main components of most Flymo Electrolux products. They need little finishing before being ready for assembly. But other, more traditional polymer processing routes are also carried out here. Injection moulding is limited to compact objects, but if you want to make continuous objects, like this vacuum extension tube, then you have to turn to a different polymer processing route. In fact, this is made in a two-stage operation. First, a profile extrusion is used to create this particular shape. And in the second part of the operation, it's adhesively bonded to itself to create the final corrugation. The polymer sockets, which will connect the tube to the vacuum cleaner, are added in a separate operation by spin welding. One surface is rotated against the other, and the frictional heat generated melts the polymer at the surface. On cooling, a strong bond is formed. Another ingenious welding technique commonly used with polymer products is ultrasonic welding. Here the two-piece impeller assembly is again joined together by frictional heat, but this time generated by oscillation at the two surfaces in contact. Assembly is achieved conventionally in lines or workstations. The ABS hood on this wheel lawnmower is fitted with a 1.4 kilowatt motor before the fan and blade are attached.
The operator then attaches the spindles for the wheels before the motor is tested and then packed. On this line about 225 mowers are produced in an eight hour shift. In all, traditional assembly, testing and packing can typically involve around 25 operators, making it the most labour intensive part of the whole operation. It was in this area that Flymo have adopted a radical new initiative and are experimenting with a robot assembly cell. They wanted to try to integrate manufacture and assembly, eliminating transport, and by matching the cycle times of cell and injection machines, eliminate storage. Working with polymers allows rapid redesign of components to suit the assembly cell. So how does it work? Flymo chose a five-axis Unimate Puma for detailed assembly and a Cincinnati Model T3 to service it. Here loading the motor is the first stage of assembly. The motor is located on a swing table which will feed the Puma when it has finished its own cycle. Meanwhile, the Puma is finding the spacers, provided from a self-feeding hopper. These, together with the blade, are placed on the fan assembly. After the machine has registered that the operation is complete, the swing table moves to provide a motor for another cycle and allow the bolt fixing the blade to the motor shaft to be tightened. The Cincinnati will then, at a convenient stage, move this to a rail supplying an operator. The operator is supplied by the ABS hoods directly from the injection moulding machine that we saw earlier. And the important point here is that the cycle time of the slowest moulding machine has to be matched to that of the cell. But why use operators at all? There are many tasks which a robot cannot perform, or we haven't uh, yet uh, developed techniques to, to enable them to perform. Therefore, we have to introduce a couple of human operators to do these manually difficult tasks. And they are positioned in such a way that they balance the various operations. On completion, the hood with motor assembly, switch and wiring is passed for testing before being picked up by the Cincinnati and placed into a box for packing. The box travels on to a second human link in the chain. She packs the handles which, like the hoods, are supplied directly from the manufacturing area. Another robot has loaded the steel handles onto a transporter ready to receive a polymer coating. The coating will protect the steel from corrosion and make it more comfortable for the user. So how does the process work? The handle is first heated by passing an electrical current which also vaporizes any excess oil. Hot metal is then immersed in a fluidized bed of low density polyethylene. The coating is baked in ovens before being transported on the same rail direct to the assembly area. An ingenious process 
But why was the Minimo chosen as the first product to be manufactured in this cell? Firstly, it, it had to be a, a relatively high volume product, uh, one that you can, you can, you can justify the, the very high levels of expenditure that are required. Um, secondly, it's got to be capable of being assembled using a robot. Uh, therefore, the assembly methods have got to be relatively simple. It, also, the components have got to be uh, designed in such a way that they too can be capable of being assembled. So this company have used engineering polymers extensively in their range of products, giving lighter and more robust appliances for the marketplace. But it's the speed and effectiveness of processing polymers to shape which has enabled Flymo to achieve a high level of production efficiency. They have remained at the forefront, using and applying the most modern techniques directly to manufactured polymers. Polymers are important to our industry because it has given our designers much greater scope to design new ideas and concepts. It has also given us uh, greater freedom to develop our manufacturing techniques to make our products in a most cost-effective way and help us to meet a very high market demand. Mm -hmm.